Well, what's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody is having a great hump day. You know, I am just, oh, jeez. Like you, probably tired about the whole watch situation with C.D. Lamb. It's getting to be ridiculous with the Cowboys that everything is so painful. You would think that we were building a rocket to go to Mars. I mean, honestly, when we talk, you know, it's so complex and, you know, people expect these things to just be done. in a million You have been talking since last year. We talked about last year. You guys were talking about paying cd lamb so this is over a year and here it is we're, we're still stuck with deadlines make deals get done where you literally will turn around and blame the players for not having success when you guys f around and do stuff okay let's say now, now brian game time brian kind of beat me down and said that the Vikings screwed the pooch because they paid Justin Jefferson so much money and yada, yada, yada. But I, I want to actually look, because here's what I'm going to say. Clearly, the Joneses don't know what they're doing when it comes to contracts because we've had a contract situation <coughs> problems with the Cowboys forever. This is not new, people. You can actually trace, <coughs> excuse me, the Cowboys' issues with the salary cap back to when we had Wade Phillips and things. Way back. Do you guys remember Marion Barber, rest his soul, who was a part-time running back? He wasn't the starter. He was sharing time. Marion the Barbarian, who was beast mode before he was, who was literally running over people. It was exciting. Exciting. But you knew his career is not going to be long just because of the nature of the way he played football. But yet the Cowboys signed him to a $53 million contract. I think it was seven years, which was unheard of for a running back at that time. You can look at, and of course he was gone two years later. You can look at Miles Austin, who perpetually had hamstring issues, injury problems. Okay. And after one good year, they paid him. And the reason I bring these two up is you can directly correlate Marion Barber's contract with the same mistake that they made with Zeke Elliott. You can take Miles Austin's contract with a player who was constantly injured and relate it to Michael Gallup's. The thing is, is this is what's crazy to me about the Cowboys. They will go through and they will play players that have an injury history or at a position that you normally don't pay. You see what I'm saying? Running backs, the whole thing. Look, you don't pay running backs for a longevity. You don't look at running backs for long term. You know, players to sign like, like C.D. Lamb, I like players that don't get injured. I like ones that have been getting better every year, as opposed to Michael Gallup, who, mind you, we're spending $4 million in dead money this year and $8 million in dead money next year. So this, this is the maddening thing to me, is the Cowboys will waste money in saying, let's get rid of C.D. Lamb, because he's too expensive, take a massive dead hit, literally pay more for CD Lamb to be gone than the Cleveland Browns had him for the first year. They will pay money and waste 13 million dollars in dead money on Michael Gallup, a guy who has been injured. But yet a guy who's arguably one of the top receivers in football, nah man, we we, we can't pay him. We can't take a risk on that guy. We can't take a risk on a guy who has actually worked on his body where he's a little little bit beefier 
a little bit stronger and got more of an attitude after coming off of history breaking numbers for the team. We're going to sit here and, and we probably offered him, you know, they, they said that the deal they offered was under thirty three million dollars. OK. All right. You know, I, it, I get it, people. I get it. That's that, that that's that's life changing money for you and me. But you have to understand we are talking about the top of the top in the world at what they do. OK, I don't care if you clean toilets, if you are the very best toilet cleaning company out there, you're getting paid. You're getting paid a lot more than everybody else. So we keep getting this whole thing that, you know, we can't pay them. You had no problem paying Jalen Smith, another guy who was injured, another guy who was literally on one leg. No problem with that. We have the highway littered with dead contract money of paying guys that were injured. Tony Pollard, franchise tagged him. No problem. Even though he's coming off an injury. But let's say, hypothetically, that the Cowboys, which don't seem to understand how to work the contract, it's so painful, it's so difficult, it's so hard, and won't get anybody who knows what they're doing. How about this? How about the Cowboys just say, you know what? We're going to take Justin Jefferson's contract. And we're going to give C.D. Lamb one more dollar and we're going to structure it exactly the same. Right? Because we're talking about 35 million versus 32. So we're talking about less than $3 million, $2.5 million maybe. Maybe $2.1 million a year. Grand scheme of things, we're talking about 5%. 5%. But listen to how, I want you to see what Justin, oh, wrong one, what Justin Jefferson's contract looks like. Because see, this is one we can truly put out there like apples to apples. Because Justin Jefferson was in the same draft as C.D. Lamb. Same draft, drafted later. So C.D. Lamb actually was a little bit more money his rookie year. Both of them were on the fifth-year option. They got his deal done. Fully guaranteed, $88.7 million. Okay. So, payout. This year, what he's putting in his pocket is $38.6 million. Okay? That's, that's the actual cash money. Okay? Which sounds like a lot of money. Which it is. But here's the thing. Do you see this number right here? Salary cap charge is $8.6 million this year. Okay? Let's take a look at the contract. So, his cap number. $8.6 million for this year. Now, keep in mind, right now, well, actually, it's not. It's not on the books right now. Cowboys have $29 million of cap space, roughly. I need to check it because we did get the, the, the two new signings. But say $27 million is what they have. Because the 17 for CeeDee Lamb's cap hit is not on there because he's suspended. Because he's not in camp. So, here's the thing. If you were to do this deal right here today... The Cowboys would still have about $19 million of cap space to work with. I know what you're saying. Yeah, but that's just the first year, man. Mark, come on, bro. Bro, it's $38 million, uh, $35 million a year. Yeah, but take a look how it's structured. It's $15 million for a cap hit for next year. Hmm. At the moment... The Cowboys have about $65 million, it looks like, for cap space next year. So we could end up looking and saying, okay, we could have C.D. Lamb under contract for next year, and we still have $50 million. Oh, but wait. If you don't spend the money that you save, that $9 million that you save on the cap this year, follow me? Because his hit would be $17 million if they don't get a new contract. 8.6 if he does. It's $9 million. That $9 million could be carried over to next year. Oh, wait a minute. So 
having him signed with that $50 million left over, if you carry that $9 million over, you have $59 million. So let me say to you right now, which is better, the Cowboys doing what they're doing, basically an alienated player, keeping him off the field, Right? Eventually, maybe they don't get the deal done and he has to play and come in mad that he's getting the $17 million and then he's getting hit with the fines for the three games, so somewhere to the tune of $5 million, that he's going to be pissed off and so on, and a distraction, or paying him this contract. Now, I get it. His cap number does balloon up to $38 million the third year in 2026. Yeah, but here's the thing. In essence... What you're really getting is C.D. Lamb for $8.6 million this year. Take the cap savings for the following year. And what you're really paying is, is $6 million for next year. In essence, C.D. Lamb would cost you, would cost you only $14 million for the first two years of the contract. So explain to me why this is so difficult. You can literally give him that contract and be in better shape. You can roll more money over to help out with next year where you could literally, because I don't see the Cowboys going out and spending big money. If they end up having $20 million right now, I guarantee they won't spend more than five of it. They can roll $15 million onto next year's cap. And have more money to be able to pay other guys. And see, this is where I have to kind of call bullshit. Things aren't, are, aren't always as they appear. You can look at Trevor Lawrence's contract, be it they had more years that they could hide money in. But you can even go three years down the road, and it's still not anywhere near what the Cowboys have for a cap hit for this year. Either the Cowboys literally are so inept at doing the contracts and don't know, or there's another reason why they're doing this stupid stuff. And the waiting is not helping you any. It's not. Not at all. All right, good people. That's all I have to say about that. And as always, I appreciate you all. Peace out.